Hi everyone, it's Callie. Thanks so much for being here. I'm creating a window shadow card today and I'm not calling it a box card because it's on a regular A2 frame. So I'm just gonna call it a shadow frame card. And we're gonna use the Secret Garden window die. And there are some accessory dies at the center of this set as you can see. So we'll be die cutting that. But first, we're gonna go ahead and stamp a few images. I have the You Autumn Know set and I just wanna get a few images of these mice and I want it floating on those die cut sprigs from the Secret Garden window dies. The Copic coloring on these mice are super simple. So I'm using four colors for the mice. I'm adding the darkest color first in the nooks and crannies where I want the shading to be. And then I'll blend them out with the lighter shades. I'm gonna use some R30 for their cheeks. And then I'm gonna use darkest brown shade on their bodies, on their noses, to help their noses stand out a little bit. So that was super quick and easy to do. I set the images aside once I die cut everything, and now we're gonna create that window frame for the top of this window card. I have a piece of cardstock that's six and a quarter by five and a half, and I have the longer side of the cardstock butt up against the top, and I'm just gonna score a half inch and one inch from both ends. Now before I die cut a window into that card panel, I want to create a frame as well. So I'm using some patterned paper from the What's Sewing On Petite Paper Pack, and I'm using the largest die from the small stitched rectangle stackables, and I'm gonna die cut that frame out first. Now I can use the secret garden window die and die cut that first frame into that pattern paper panel. Now I'm going to have to snip my dies apart. I didn't want to do this, but because I wanted to layer the windows, I'm going to have to separate these dies. I'm going to use that inner die to die cut into that white panel that we scored earlier. And so I'm going to use my frame that I die cut to help me center where that window is going to go. So I'll remove that pattern paper now and then hold my die in place. I do use some temporary adhesive, so don't worry. And you'll see here, I can just pop that die out and we've created our panel and our window for our little shadow box frame. I'm gonna use some Copic markers to color all of these tiny little sprigs. All of the combinations will be listed on the blog post, so be sure to check that out if you're interested in the colors that I use to color this frame. I'm using several different greens to give it a bit more interest, and then I can color in the flowers with pops of color with pinks and purples. The coloring again is very simple, not a whole lot of blending to do, and because the spaces are small, the colors blend really nicely together so that you don't have to work at it a whole lot. And I have these little extra pieces to the side because I wanna overlay these little flowers onto the, the matching flowers on the window, but the two extra foliage dies are gonna be what our mice is going to be floating across the window on. So now that the coloring is done, I can do a Z fold on those score lines that we did. So I'm gonna fold them in and then out. So you'll create this little Z fold on both sides and that's what is going to be attaching itself to a card base later on. It'll create a bit of dimension and shadow in this window and that's why we're calling it a shadow card. Okay, so once those lines are burnished, I can go ahead and adhere my frame to the top portion of that frame. So this frame really adds some color to the card as well as some layering as well. Next, I'm gonna use some glue to adhere our little colored images to the floating foliage that I colored as well. I want this little mouse here to be floating down on this little leaf. And then for the mouse that looks like he's flying across the card, I'm gonna attach him to this seed stem. And then for these little purple blooms here, I'm just gonna add them directly over the other blooms on the card. Now there's some overhang from the window, so I'm just gonna use that for some support so that I can add the flower centers as well. So we have this beautiful window all prepped now and we can go ahead and add all of our other elements. What I'm gonna do first is work on sentiments because I want our images to flow around the sentiments. I die cut some simple wavy banners using some Ballet Slippers cardstock and I'm gonna stamp the sentiments onto those wavy banners and then attach them to my card. 
I adhere the first part of the sentiment to the top left hand corner of the card and then the other one to the bottom right. So I'm just adding a little bit of adhesive over the overhang on the foliage to help me provide support for these sentiment banners. And so it's going to attach itself to the side of the frame as well as on top of the foliage. And I did have to remove this top one a little bit and move it up, but luckily the glue was still wet and it didn't ruin my card. So just FYI, kind of space things out. That's why I always do a rough layout, but I didn't get a chance to do that on this card until it was too late. So I'm roughly laying out the images now to see where I want those floating images to go and realized I needed some support in the window. I have a half inch piece of acetate strip here that I'm gonna add some double-sided adhesive to and then adhere that to the back side of my window to create some support for my floating mice to adhere to. So I've used some double-sided adhesive tape and again, I'm gonna adhere it to the back side of my window and I'm just gonna center it. It doesn't, need, doesn't even need to be perfect. I just wanna make sure that it's flush with the cardstock so that there's no bowing. And then we will go ahead and attach our images. I added this one here to the left side of this bottom banner. And this was the point where I realized I didn't have enough space for my floating mice. So I had to pull up that top sentiment and provide more space. So I'll go ahead and attach my floating mice here. And then I'll finish by attaching that first sentiment back on the top above the mice. Now to create some color behind that window, I'm going to use another stackable die. This is the second largest die in the large stitch stackables. I have them both there together. So there's a lot of, a lot of different sizes that you can use. And I just wanted something that's not going to interfere with the flaps on the folds of our Z fold. So I'm using a smaller stitch die and I'm going to attach that to a card base. And then we can use some double sided strong adhesive tape on the flaps or tabs of this Z fold here and attach it to the card base. So after I attach this, then our shadow frame card is complete. As you can see, it adds a bit of dimension because of that Z fold and you're going to have some shadow in there, but it'll fold flat and you can put it in a envelope and mail your card without all the bulk. I hope you enjoyed this card. Again, if you're interested in any of the products that I used or the color combinations, be sure to check out the blog where all the information will be provided for you and all the links will be linked for your convenience. Thanks so much for stopping by and I hope you all have a great day. Bye.